Hello, I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. Since when do we say hello at the beginning of this? Yeah. Way to bring me down like not even <laughs> 10 seconds into the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Mally Moore. I'm going to take your introduction away from you for that. Uh, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist. We are a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Uh, I like how you. I, I just. It just occurred to me. You say we are a podcast. Like we're not two human beings. We no. are. <laughs> we are podcast. We, we are podcast. <laughs> Fuck. We, that'd uh, be so cool if we were robots. We do a podcast on movies with bleak endings. Uh, today's episode, notwithstanding. Um, Take that as you will with that yeah. inflection, but I, I literally uh, finished this movie forty five seconds ago. <laughs> uh, this movie uh, that we're talking about this week uh, is the Place Beyond the Pines from two thousand twelve. From my uh, pick, previous talked about director Derek Sanfrance. Ge- I'd say we're gonna we're gonna say his name wrong again this time too. I got it. I got you. Um, Apologies ahead of time. This episode is delayed That's by a day. That's my but, fault. Well, I wasn't going to throw you under the oh, bus, no, but sure. No, it's I'm, all I'm my gonna, fucking I'm going to own up to it. It is my <laughs> fault because I have been too sleepy to do this. Well, you've been working. I mean, that's a better. That's the best reason, of, if any, to for us our, our episodes to be late is that we're hopefully doing things <laughs> but, in the industry. But, believe it or not, <laughs> we do do things besides this. Both of us regularly yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah unfortunately this doesn't pay the bills we don't have any ads not at all in the slightest not because we don't want to have ads we do it, trust me we want to have anything, ads. it costs us money <laughs> yeah it does cost us money <laughs> it adds up real quick anyway. um, so yeah film is uh the place beyond the pines mally this was my third time i believe rewatching this film this was what my number is this for you 300 and <laughs> three time i love okay. this you know i love me some dc that mm-hmm. is the director some rg some oh some baby goose uh some bm ben mendelson killing mm-hmm. it as per mm-hmm. usual uh eva mendes who i'm usually not a big fan of crushing oh. it um uh, I'm a huge Mar- huge fan i'm gonna say his name wrong Ma- Mar- I'm- marshall ollie yep the guy from Moonlight and the upcoming season of True Detective, uh, killing it. Have you have you seen that trailer, the teaser for True Detective? Yeah. How am I not going to see that? <laughs> uh, kind of worried about it. Not gonna um, lie. I have because it. Sh- I know some friends of people who worked on it crew wise. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's uh, apparently a, I don't know, there's some behind the scenes stuff that worries me, but I don't know, man. Um, you know, a lot of movies that have drawn behind the scenes end up being good. Solo, look at that. Yeah, meh. At, um, so, so mm, it wasn't as bad as I thought it, it was going to be, I'll it, give it that. I, it wasn't a great film, wasn't a great film. It's a no. damn good time, though. It's fun. I had fun watching it. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. No, we're, we're talking, about, talking about the place beyond Baby Goose. Um, you saw this in theaters, oh, yeah, I'm guessing. yeah, and Bradley Cooper's in this. Always forget. And Ray yeah. Liotta. This cast is amazing. And Dane DeHaan. And Dane DeHaan. And the other kid who I can't remember. Yeah. I'm assuming you saw this in theaters, right? Yeah. What, what was that experience like? Tell me your initial reaction. I struggled to keep it together. Really? Dude, this... Emotional. Yeah. This movie, like, again, dude, I don't know, something... Derek just fucking cuts me to my core, dude. Blue Valentine. Yeah. And this, his third film, not so much. And I'll tell you why. What's his third no, film? No, it's called uh, The Light Between Oceans. It, it, it was pretty under the radar a couple years ago. It, uh, I, Michael Fassbender's in it, but oh, okay. I don't know. Man, it's something like... I don't know. I want to see... Maybe he's gotten something else coming up, and mm-hmm. we'll see. But I'm pretty convinced, based on that two of his three movies are fucking amazing, mm-hmm. if he doesn't work with Gosling, he's got nothing. Ah, strong, strong sentiment. Um, 
I saw this one at home uh, right when it came out. Uh, caught it on demand, I think. Um, loved it, of course. I want to say I saw this one before Blue Valentine. Huh. I'm not 100%. But I remember really liking the feel of this movie, the aesthetic, yeah. the tone. Like uh, there's, the structure. there are like there's two whole ass movies in this. I would venture to say almost three. See, I won't because I'm gonna be honest. That little middle portion with Bradley mm-hmm. Cooper post mm-hmm. Gosling, mm-hmm. Uh, not. So I say not almost. Not my favorite part. Like that part. I'm every time I watch it. As much as I love this movie, I'm kind of like, okay, can we get past this part? See, I kind of think the three acts the three stories are in descending order of impactfulness and well-roundedness i think it just gets a little weaker as it goes on um i think that middle act there is though it's it's purely there to be the bridge between the two. Oh I mean, yeah absolutely not just not just time wise in terms but of how we're the gonna aging. agree that the gosling portion is by far of the course best of part course of like that Okay, let's let's start at the beginning. The opening shot. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. Just that fucking wonder from the knife flipping all the way into that fucking motorcycle cage. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Uh, we're kind of spilling our wad a little bit though here. Let's let's talk about the, some backstory else first. What is new? Uh, the place beyond the pines, like we talked about, the year was twenty twelve. Uh, Derek C. and France is directing and writing, uh, starring everyone we already mentioned, Ryan Gosling, Eva Mendes, Ben Mendelsohn, Bradley Cooper, Ray Liotta, Mahershala Ali, Bruce Greenwood, and Rose Byrne. I always forget Rose Byrne's oh, in this as well. Oh, yeah. She is. And Bruce yeah, Greenwood. Yeah, Bradley Cooper's wife. Yep. God, stacked. Had a budget of $15 million, managed to gross $35.5 million, uh, and currently sits at 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a little low, I think, for what this movie is. I give her. I give her. I give I, it to it. I, yeah, I, I would go higher eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, um, like I said, that I don't know. Just that middle portion doesn't quite do it for me. Well, let's get into the trailer because I'm sure we got a lot to talk about. Uh, let's go ahead and get through this trailer, and then we can talk about that. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing. And the heart Romina here? Who's that guy? He's yours. Right. You're gonna tell me? I heard from you over a year. You just took off. My son and I should be around him. I wasn't around my dad with the way I turned out. How are you gonna take care of us? I can't think of another line of work that I'd rather be in. You're so smart, you can do anything you want. I just don't understand why you're doing this. I'm a cop, Jeff. You got a kid? You want to provide for that kid? You got to do that using your skill set. And your skill set? Shit, damn. Oh! Everybody wants to live, put your hands in the fire! 105 in pursuit of suspect. 104, I got a visual on a motorcycle. It's for me. I'm still his father. I can give him stuff. Hey, I'm Officer DeLuca. We're here to search your house. What for? We're looking for the money that Luke Lanton, mayor, may not have given to you. 14 grand. The lion's share is going to our hero. This is your problem. This is our problem. And I'm bringing it to your attention because that's what I should do. I want to do two in one day. Yo, get up! I'm not going to let you bring us both down. There's a way out of this. You're not gonna like it. Like 
Okay, so the trailer's misleading as fuck. You think so? I mean, yeah. I I don't know. Like, going into this movie, I did not expect the three separate storylines like that. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I was like, oh, they're saving a lot for the movie because they barely showed Bradley and Gosling together. Mm -hmm. It's because they have one fucking scene together. That's why. Yeah. (laughs) Like, they did not fuck around. Yeah, they really don't uh, set you up for the uh, the full scope of the movie, and I think that's to its benefit. I think if you go in knowing it's going to be this, like I don't know how you market it without it seeming kind of cheesy. Oh, like, for sure. Yeah, they did. Um, the the market the way to go. The marketing department. Mm-hmm. I think the rhythm of the butterfly knife is amazing as like a, a metronome for the trailer. Um, I'm a sucker for percussion. Yeah, mm. I really do it like that they kind of do the bait and switch though, kind of like uh, like Psycho. Like you think it's gonna be all about Gosling, and then he's out in like the first fifty minutes. Yeah, of a what was this like two and a half hours? I think. Uh yeah, and you don't see Bradley Cooper till like minute forty. I don't know, a couple minutes before that. Yeah. Um. Mm. Okay. God damn. Uh, let's talk about the place beyond the pines. I always forget that Mahershala Ali and Ben Mendelsohn are in this movie. <laughs> Same. Every single time. First, and I, I guess always, you could add I, Rose Byrne to that list, too. I always think, every time Ben Mendelsohn pops up, I was like, isn't it? I thought Brian Cranston was in this. And I'm like, I'm thinking of Drive. Yeah. Why does? Why do they always give, they always give Baby Goose, like, an older partner? Yeah. An old white guy. Yeah. That's a mechanic. It's always an old white. <laughs> it's like in Die Hard, how Bruce Willis mm-hmm. always had a like uh, friendly black guy with him. Ryan Gosling mm-hmm. always has an old white mechanic with him. Mm-hmm. It's just you know, if you got a working formula, stick to it. Yeah. Also, I was I found it kind of funny that watching this, I was like, huh, the hostility between Ali and Gosling's characters really funny when you think about the uh, whole Oscar situation like two years ago yeah <laughs> Moonlight I'm surprised Moon, Moonlight versus La La Land right there I'm surprised that hasn't been made into D- some kind of meme Derek predicted it um I to mention it earlier I think one of the strongest parts of this movie uh is the the aesthetic the atmosphere I think Putting it in the northwest, but making it feel like the southeast. Well, because it takes place in like Upper New York. Uh, yeah, it was shot there. That's what I'm saying. Put putting the story, setting it there, and the, it still has this feel of like the rural, the rural southeast. Like watching this oh, movie, I feel like okay. that could be my me. hometown. Sorry, I meant to say yeah, like it feels only like le- there's you know less southern drawls. Yeah, I mean, like just the just the look, like the, I mean, to come up right out and say it, like Ryan Gosling's essentially playing kind of this like trashy, like run down kind of like, uh, uh just like Does a white trash kind of guy. Does this make you want to like just <laughs> fucking blast Metallica? It blast Metallica, drink a Coors, hop on a dirt bike. Get a, I gotta cut the sleeves off my shirt. <laughs> uh fucking every I, I, I love this movie. It costs me money though. I have to go buy new T-shirts every fucking time. Because as I'm watching, <laughs> I, it, I'm like, sleeves are bullshit. I've never and wanted a the, throat tattoo until this movie. And either. then the credits end, <laughs> like mm-hmm. the credits roll, and I'm like crying, and I just got a bunch of sleeves in my hands. Mm-hmm. Ugh, it's rough, man. Wait, what do you yeah, want I'd, a tattoo I'd, of? I've never wanted a throat tattoo until I saw this movie. I think Dude, that heart neck tattoo tattoos is are amazing. Fucking cool. Well, I think they if they're done right, like I don't like like uh for example the 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 vocalist of Hundredth, like the big eagle that he has on his neck, I think it's a little much. But I think this little simple hand drawn heartthrob tattoo with like that I, I kind of retro wavy kind of aesthetic to it, like Keep in when mind, you put that, again, literally just finished this movie, so the whole neck tattoos are cool thing, 
might be because I just finished this movie. If you ask me again tomorrow, I could have a very different opinion. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, if you put Anything that tattoo possible. on a blonde, sleeveless Metallica shirt Gosling and put him in front of a, f- a Ferris wheel at a, at a state fair, it just l- it looks good. Something about that clicks I'm not going to so lie. Well. I also am like watching this movie. I'm like, man, I could I could pull off blonde. I I think I, I when I saw this movie I had dyed my hair blonde. It. Yeah, I I did it. I remember oh, doing yeah. it back in two thousand. My hair um, my hair has been blonde. It is not a good look. Oh no, it's uh, it was two thousand eleven ish. I have to send you a picture of it, Mal. You you'll get a good kick out of oh, it. Oh, uh, but I was please, going for honestly this. Re- yeah. I say we release this episode and that picture at the same time. <laughs> let's I might let's do it. drop some um, bombs on them. We're, we're I, already I, competing with the next Marvel movie, so fuck it. I think this this movie really didn't influence me at the time because I did dye my hair blonde, but I grew it long and like a faux hawk, and I would cut the sleeves off my shirt, and I was really into that that kind of grimy look at the time. Uh, now you're into... I, I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> band t-shirts, short shorts, and... Growing my hair long again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't seen you in like two months, so I don't know what you look like now. This I'm assuming this, pretty much the same, just with longer. Pretty hair. much the same, longer hair. Yeah. yeah. Um, I might make a controversial statement, but I think... you could pull off blonde, bro. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Whoa. Was uh, the statement not "I'm going blonde"? No, the hey. statement was going to be. I think this. I think this might be my favorite performance from Gosling. Um, which is interesting because he's only in the movie for a third of it. Honestly, let's uh hold on. You pulling up his uh, filmography? Let's run down Gosling's list. Mm-hmm. Cause part of me wants to agree with you, but I gotta double check some stuff. Well, while you're doing that up, so, I just want to expand. Oh, I, like I didn't. Oh, you already got it? it pulled up. Like I wasn't reading this when you called. Uh, okay, go ahead. So, <laughs> first man, haven't seen it yet. Heard good things. Mm hmm. Almost worked on it for a few days. Didn't end up happening, though. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. Blade Runner, not as best. Oh. Not as best. Not as best. I don't know. Good. Very good. Not as best. Um, Okay. La La Land, again, very Mm -hmm. good. Not as best. The Mm -hmm. Nice Guys, very good. Pretty good. That's up there. Pretty good. Uh, The Big Short, meh. Only God Forgives, Love You Minute. I like a minute, but I also think he doesn't have much to do in the movie. Right. Uh, Gangster Squad. Didn't see it. Um, I think it's fun. I heard meh. Uh, Drive, All Good Things, Blue Valentine, Lars and the Real Girl, <sighs> highly underrated. Mm-hmm. Half Nelson, The Notebook, Murder meh. by Numbers, and now we're getting into stuff that no one cares about. But there is competition for well, let's this, say this film. And it's one what? I skipped over if anyone was watching closely. Hmm. Crazy Stupid Love? Yup. <laughs> he's um, fucking good in that. He is good in that. But I'm looking it is at... between this and Blue Valentine. I guess when I'm when I'm comparing for Gosling in particular, like what's his best role, I'm looking at is his performance the part of the movie i like or is it the movie that i like mm, okay like interesting for example blade runner love it his performance now that you mention it, it it's good but it might just be the movie yep. that he's in you know what i mean nice guys i think it's a great performance i think he's also perfect in that movie perfectly cast is it better than this performance i don't think so okay that leaves me for my sake with drive and blue valentine now, I genuinely think his performance in Drive is amazing. Yeah, it's su- it's subtle, it's low key, it fits the story well. It's even in the scenes where he's not doing anything, I still know exactly what he's, he's still thinking crushing and what. It. He- yes, is it better than Drive? Uh, I part of me wants to say yes. Part of me wants to say this movie's performance is his, his his performance is better than Drive, because I get a lot more from him from his character. I get to see him, you know, 
doing his thing at the beginning, reconnecting with, uh, with Ro, finding out he's a father, him wanting to be a father and be involved, him turning to a life of crime to support his family, him dealing with something coming between that. Like, I get the full spectrum from him. Now, but uh, let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Because there's one thing you haven't considered. Mm-hmm. And that was the 50-episode run of Young Hercules in 98. <laughs> Never seen a single episode of that show. Mm. Interesting. Um, I guess we'll leave it up for debate. I, I can't make a definitive statement yet, but I think this one might be my favorite performance from him. It's, it's def like, I don't know. It's hard to call because <sighs> for me, it's this or Blue Valentine. Yeah. And Blue Valentine, you get more from his character as well. Kind exactly. of the same thing. Exactly. But I don't know. He's just, I feel like. I needed more of his character in this movie to call it his best. I, t- I tell you what, the scene that steals it for me, though, is a two-parter. It's the ice cream scene oh. where he's little, oh. ba- little baby uh, yeah. Jason, yeah, right? Jason, Jason. Little baby Jason and him and Eva Mendez. And it, knowing that they're together in real life and have children, seeing that scene damn near breaks my they heart. They weren't at the time. They weren't at the time. You're right. But watching that now and knowing that they are together and knowing this could have been the spark or whatever, you know. But, like, they look so happy in that scene. They look so well put together. And then you juxtapose that scene with the um, the the crib building scene where he oh. assaults Marshall Ali. And just the shot of him walking out of that house, like, walking down the stairs, holding the baby... Going, having it cry to eventually it just calming and warming up to him, it it just splits my heart in two, man. Like that, even you can tell, even the baby really loves Ryan Gosling. Like, I'm that's so not happy just, they used a real baby. They didn't like American Sniper it. Well, not even that, but apparently, just from like the behind the scenes stuff I read, like that baby really loved Eva Mendez and Ryan Gosling. Like, How you if it was crying, like Eva Mendez I know, but and like, Ryan Gosling. Even if it's even if it was crying, they would give it to one of them, and it would instantly stop. So like watching him How like walk down the stairs, did the parents feel <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know, man. If I gave my son to Ryan Gosling and he stopped crying, I'd be I'd feel pretty good. <laughs> I would probably start crying. Um, but yeah, man, just that shot of him sitting on the porch with the baby in his hands, like I, I really feel for that character in Keep that in moment. Mind, this like, is thirty seconds after he hit someone with a wrench. I know, man. It's a very, it's such a weird, complicated situation to be in, though. Like he's really trying to do good by doing bad, and then like his but good he's kind of bad at doing good. That's I, it's such a weird thing because, like, I guess I'm looking. If you look at it from Marshall Ali's perspective, it's and I guess the idea is good. The execution is terrible. Like you want to buy your kid a crib, great, perfect. Uh, don't come into my house when I'm not here and start building it without, you know, in my house, you know? Like, yeah. I feel like Ryan Gosling's character has good intentions and it just, he doesn't, I guess because, I mean, that makes sense. He's not used to this. He doesn't know how to be a father, really. You know? True, true, true. I don't know. It's such a, man, and, you know, we're talking about all this. We haven't even talked about Bradley Cooper or anything yet. <laughs> yeah. But I gotta say, what of a what a hell of a way to find out that you're a father, man. Oh fuck that! Like going to your old fling's house, opening the door, and then meeting her mom with a baby, and then just being like, "Who's that kid? Oh, it's yours." What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not for nothing, man. But that baby does look a lot like Dane DeHaan. Like I looked at for it on this rewatch to see how well they did that baby looks exactly well, like a young fun fact <laughs> they actually shot that first portion waited mm-hmm. like 15 years then shot the <laughs> they did portion. they did it as a boyhood thing Dana Han was like 30 almost <laughs> yeah like mid tw- mid 20s when he made this movie he's playing like a 16 year old mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that guy will forever look like like even now like he's what 30 fucking mm-hmm. like thir- my age mm-hmm. the, he looks 18 <laughs> yeah 
Uh, something about, I mean, like, I, mean, I, I just got wrong. Done. If I shave my beard, I look 12, but, you know, there's a reason yeah. I don't. It's some crazy shit like that. Like, I just got done watching the Emmys and, like, seeing Donald Glover there and, like, he's almost 40 and looks like he's, like, 23. It's bananas, man. Angela Bassett's almost 60 and looks like she's, like, 38. Yeah. Isn't it's that ridiculous. Insane? It's, 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 I'm going to age like a fucking banana. It's terrible. Um, there's two other things I want to talk about with Ryan Gosling, if you don't mind, if, unless you got something else you want to talk about. You want, you, you, you want to talk more about Ryan Gosling? Why? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think Dustin. anyone yes, that, go. well, I just want to say, because there's so much more movie to talk about, but there's two little things I want to talk about here. This is going to be um, a three hour long episode. We never make it to Bradley <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> I'm sure you you found out about this too, but uh, I wanted to hear what your thoughts are. So apparently, when uh, going to write this this movie, uh, Derek met with Ryan Gosling and said, uh, "You know, you've done so much in in life, like in your work, in your acting career. What's something you want to do?" And he says, "You know, I always wanted to know what robbing a bank felt like," and so. They met together for lunch, and he said, okay, well, Derek asked Ryan, if you're going to rob a bank, how would you do it? And Ryan Gosling said, well, I would use a motorcycle because it's fast and agile, and uh, the motorcycle helmet can conceal your identity. Uh, then, you know, you could always just stash the motorcycle in the back of, like, a moving truck because, you know, the place will be looking for a motorcycle. It's hidden. You can get away pretty well. And Derek was like, are you out of your mind? Because that's exactly the screenplay I'm writing right now. <laughs> that's fucking insane. He says, I'm literally writing a screenplay right now about a guy that robs banks like that. Which, that could just be legend. But that, I don't know, for me that feels kind of right. Cause too perfect. I've always thought about, like, well, what's the perfect way to rob a bank? And I had something similar to that. But this idea is what way more was tangible. Yours? Well, mine was something similar in that you rob a bank, right? And... You're, I, I, first of all, I, I used a car, not a bike, because I didn't think about a bike. A bike is way smarter. Um, use a car, drive to a nearby location before, like, because when you rob a bank, you've got, what, like a maybe a 60 to 120 second window before the cops probably arrive. Yeah. You stash that car nearby in, like, a garage that you know, and you leave in a different vehicle. And, or, you know, you lay low. Basically, you just got to be close to the bank, but, Moving the getaway vehicle to a moving target like a moving truck is way smarter. I mean, in replacing that with a motorcycle, using the helmet to hide your identity, it seems on paper like a pretty good getaway plan. And it works very well for him. And the only reason it doesn't is because, you know, he gets a little in over his head there at the last the last one. Yep. Dude, these, the scene, the shots of the motorcycle, like the the stunt driving, is amazing in this movie too. Like Some when they're of, going through that cemetery, that, a lot of that, uh, like a lot of that stuff is Gosling too. Apparently, oh really? Like that shot where he goes to the intersection and all the cars crash. Yeah, that's him. oh, I did read about that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm in particular the one that impressed me the most is when they're going through the cemetery and you're in the police car following. Them, oh yeah, and he is going so fucking fast through that cemetery. Which also made me think, like, how do you film that? Because going through a cemetery seems a little disrespectful. <laughs> like, I I'm sure doubt there's. It was an actual cemetery. But the thing is, though, man, if you look at that cemetery, they must have put a ton of headstones in there, or it's VFX and they put them in post. But I'm, I don't know, I'm man, sure just... it was a mix of both practical and post. Uh, yeah, that's. Because yeah, that I don't think I don't, I don't think they're getting cleared to drive no. <laughs> through a fucking cemetery at insanely high speeds. No, no, of course not. Um, if they did, fucking give me their location guy's number. Yeah. <laughs> the only other note I have for the could, gossip section the show I'm on right now, he could really help us out because it's been a shit show. <laughs> um, the only other note I got for the gossip section is about gossiping himself. And I don't know if we talked about this when we talked about Only God Forgives or Blue Valley. In fact, this is the third Gosling movie we've done, right? Is, oh, yeah, because we did do Only God Forgives. Um, He has to have Fuck. the funniest this screeching is, voice this really, ever. This is really going <laughs> to interfere with my idea for my next podcast. 
<laughs> He's ba- got to have the funniest the baby goose hour. The funniest screeching voice of all time between oh this. Oh my god, his voice cracks so much. But he's trying, when to, he's rob trying the to rob bank. the bank. Put it in the bag. <laughs> it's so. Oh man, I can't imagine getting into a, a yelling match with Ryan Gosling and hearing that and not laughing my tits off because that's. Ah. Uh, okay. First I love off, did Ryan you just Gosling. Use the phrase laughing your tits off. I did. I love okay. Ryan Gosling, but I, he cannot play. Unless you do it like drive, you cannot really play tough, man. I I can't. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we're also assuming that is his actual screaming voice. It's got to be. He's done it in like three or four movies now. He's screeched like that. <laughs> when did? What other movies? Well, he says take it off like that, and only God forgives. He goes take it off, talking about the her dress, and then in Blade Runner twenty forty nine when he has that breakdown when he finds out oh, that he could yeah. be. He does that too. Or he's like screeching like that. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Fuck. All that right. Well, let's hilarious. let's let's get off Gosling because we've we there's movies <sighs> not just about him. Let's let's do, talk some Bradley Cooper. Um, Bradley Cooper's it, in this movie. It's a small. So detail. anyway, the part with Dane DeHaan when he. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's it's a small detail, but when Bradley Cooper is going into the house to track down Gosling. Mm-hmm. He is chewing gum the whole time. I know. I find that super annoying. Yes. <laughs> like he's pursuing an armed robbery suspect into possible hostages, uh, their home, and he's just chewing chewing some gum. <laughs> I I hate it. I found it so annoying. What do you think about the death scene though? Fantastic. Um, was not expecting it at all. In the was not even now, either. it kind of gets me. I'm just like, "Fuck!" He just, oh yeah, oh yeah. Ryan yeah. Gosling doesn't live. <laughs> yeah, that shot of him dead on the ground is oh, awesome. It's like, but crazy. Why you gotta do that to me? Yeah. Um, but I guess more, more. And my question is more, like, it, like I, I don't know, just like because his eyes are still open. And, like, Mm -hmm. him and Bradley Cooper, well, I mean, he's not technically staring because he's dead. But, like, his eyes are open and him and Bradley Cooper are just, like, staring at each other. Yeah. I I guess more of my question about the death scene is, like, when we cut to Bradley Cooper in the hospital and his, I guess it's his police chief is interviewing him. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're going over, like, the protocol, like, well, did you announce yourself? Did you give him a chance to put down his weapon? Who fired first? Like, it's something I forgot about with this movie was this soul. did he do the right thing? And I guess that's most of what the movie is dealing with is him grappling with it. Like, did I do that right? And watching it this time, you know, I forgot about that part, so I wasn't really paying attention, but I was playing it over my head, and I, was, I didn't go back and rewatch it, but I was like... Yeah, did, what did he do the right thing? Did he did he miss a step? I think, you know, I don't remember. He doesn't try opening the door before he kicks it in, right? Cuz he says he did, he did. He says he tried opening the door, it was locked, so he kicked it in. I think he jiggles the handle. Yeah, no, no he does. He jiggles the handle on right. whenever the door is locked cuz every other door just opened. Um yeah. that's when he starts. He's like, "Ah, oh, this is probably blah, blah, blah. like, yeah. you know, cop shit." And he doesn't wait for a response because Gosling doesn't give him one. And he kicks the door in and he does shoot first, right? Because I th- I think the idea is that he, he thinks... He shoots immediately. Yeah, he doesn't give him a chance. Um, and then and Gosling, then Gosling shoots him back. shoots yeah. him in the leg as he's like falling out of yeah. the window. It's it's a weird... God. It's a, <sighs> it's a weird predicament, man. Because it happens so quickly. Uh, there's no assaults or you know Gosling doesn't shoot anybody or harm anyone uh but he gets shot out the window by the cop doing the who's doing the right thing pursuing the suspect but doesn't announce like I mean well he denounces but doesn't give him the chance to put the gun down doesn't wait for a response or anything so it's so it's muddy but like it's crazy to think that he ends up becoming like what a DA at the end of the movie yeah New York District Attorney yeah it's, I don't know. I mean, I I don't feel qualified to talk about things like that, but well, you know, I just, do own a book on criminal law, so 
<laughs> um, Allow me. And yeah. you know, I've, I mean, I've seen every episode of Law and Order SVU. So, <laughs> well, up until Stabler left, and then I just stopped watching because what's the point? Yeah. Um. I, so I anyway, know, proper it's, protocol it's, is. I'm kidding. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> it's something I'd be interested to look at more on the rewatch because I. Well, I know luckily a lot of today adults. with us we have New York Police Chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, fuck! I should have got my roommate's dad who's a retired nypd officer on this episode he could have told us some stuff maybe that's something we can ask him then and talk about on a future episode but like that's i know a lot of people don't care for the bradley cooper section of this movie i still find it to be pretty engaging um no, no. that's something it's I've... good it's yeah. just like how you gonna follow baby goose up with bradley cooper like uh, gotta... yeah <laughs> mm. i it's something on rewatches i'd be curious to look at as I appreciate, Bradley Cooper's I appreciate character it for what it is, mm-hmm. like without like you can't jump from Gosling into the Dane DeHaan and Avery's son stuff mm-hmm. without that middle like without that whole section the movie makes completely no sense and like it's yeah. like everything that happens in that scene could not be explained via just dialogue or yeah. and it I mean you could it would be exposition for the sake of fucking exposition sake yeah um so does uh is it in his contract for ray liotta that he always has to play a piece of shit in in his movies you bite your tongue he's a good (laughs) guy in blow (laughs) and smoking aces Mm. he's he's good he does his (laughs) job this yeah. guy, he defends it's a rough the honor of the innocent. It's it's a rough spot that Bradley Cooper's character is placed in, and it's obviously you know very poignant with stuff today because like you you have the bad apple that spoils the whole bunch, gives <laughs> cops a bad rep, uh, and you know people ask her like, well, why don't good cops come out and turn in their piece of shit partners or their peer pressure? Co- yeah, it's I mean. Do you think when Bradley Cooper is driving out to the woods with Ray Liotta that Ray Liotta is going to kill him? Uh, I don't know if he's going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Just threaten, threaten him, extort him, fuck out of him. Yeah, probably. Well, like well, maybe like hit his hit him in the kneecap with a hammer or something. Yeah, you know, gentle the, shit. The the scene with Bradley Cooper going into Eva Mendez's house is so uncomfortable for me. Not only because it's like oh rough, police taking advantage of minorities, but like just the scene of Bradley Cooper in the in Jason's bedroom, and then the cop telling him to pick the baby up. Oh, it made me Ooh. it made me so queasy in this, and like I wanted to throw up. I was like, this is so like. We've done some fucked up movies on this show. I feel like that is real fucked up. <laughs> yeah. That'd be like... Oh, God damn it, that man. That'd just be so fucked up. That'd just be like one of these cops that have been in the news for like the brutality and shit, just going into the victim's homes and picking up their kid like at, out of the crib. Well, wasn't there it's... just something in the news like last week about like the cops got a call to this house... Because the house, like, this guy got robbed, and they searched the guy's house. The guy who got robbed got arrested for having marijuana. I, you know, I don't remember that, I don't remember that story, but I'm sure that's happened. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, what, what, okay, like, what? Yeah. I mean, just, last, just this last week, the one about the guy that in Texas, the, the, in his own home, the police bursting into the wrong apartment and shooting him, and then... I Fox didn't news. hear about that. Oh, you haven't heard about it? It's been all over the news, uh, man, dude, and, and been, social media. I've oh, you've been, been working, working, yeah. So. Yeah, no, this this, this uh, the, the white... The little CNN and NPR updates on my phone can only tell me so much. <laughs> this this uh, white female cop uh, went to what she thought was her apartment. I guess she was on the wrong floor or the wrong door, basically. Uh, opened the door uh, and shot the resident that was in there in his own home. Because she thought it was her place and she thought she was being robbed. <laughs> and uh, he was a black a black gentleman. She was a white woman. 
and then Fox News just a couple days ago put out uh, that they found marijuana in the guy's house. Like that has any relevance has, to the fact who that who gives a shit <laughs> yeah. if he get, was got a little high on occasion. And the crazy thing is, apparently, this woman had how like, high was oh, this fucking woman? <laughs> apparently, the crazy thing is this woman saying that it was she thought it was her apartment, but apparently, she has a welcome mat and a potted plant outside her apartment door, and this dude has nothing. And I don't know. It's like <laughs> it. Somebody made a joke about it on Twitter, but it's literally the equivalent. It's like almost beat for beat that Dave Chappelle joke he has about. The cops bust, like, bursting into a black person's home, shooting him and saying, oh, apparently he hung up pictures of his family everywhere. <laughs> like, he, he broke into this house, put up pictures of his family. I've seen oh, this before. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly Holy that. Holy shit, it really is. S- so ridiculous, That's... dude. Oh, man. Just, I can't even imagine being in my own house and a cop bursting in and shooting me and getting away with it. So crazy. Uh, man, I think she's been charged with manslaughter. Me, I, I would fucking hope so. Yeah, I, that's there's a silver lining to that story. At least she's being charged with something. <laughs> Did they, um, fuck, how yeah. stupid? I don't do know. You dude. have to be. I don't uh, think it's stupid as necessarily as just just uh, plain fucking dumb. Not even dumb. I think it's premeditated. But I'm just gonna keep my opinions to myself because uh, I've read more. Obviously, I've read more about the story than you have because you're just not hearing I, about it. But I only have the um, details you have told me. Yeah. On this um, let's, recording of us <laughs> not talking about the place beyond the pines. Vroom vroom, Mally! I'm coming through with free shit. <laughs> Why you treat me like your child? Uh, yeah, that's the sound. I'm older than you. That's the sound of winning free stuff from us. Uh, if you want to be on that train or on the back of this motorcycle that's coming into town with some it's, free said, stuff. It, wasn't it just a, mo- <laughs> it's a motorcycle? It's a train. Pick a, pick a metaphor. Here I come in on my dirt bike. Choo-choo. <laughs> uh, go right now to reddit.com oh slash r slash silver linings playlist. Find this official discussion thread, the the, uh, the place beyond the pines. Uh, leave this contest code I'm about to give you right now as a comment in that thread. We'll randomly select one of you to win some free stuff from us. That's it. You don't have to pay anything. Don't have to sign up for anything. None of that stuff. Uh, and all you got to do is leave this contest code as a comment. Ride like lightning. Crash like thunder. Uh, that's it. Leave that as a contest code. We'll randomly select one of you guys. Get in touch Hell with you. Yeah! And uh, yeah, remember, ride like lightning. Let's get back into the movie. Uh, I don't have many more notes, but I do want to ask still about Bradley Coming Cooper. Coming next week, Dustin and Mally yeah. talk politics. Um, God, I could do way too many episodes on that but we should do an entire honestly we because i don't like i read like npr and cnn like listen mm-hmm. to npr and stuff but like i'm so bad about retaining any political knowledge like i listen <laughs> yeah. to this shit every day and all of it's just white noise to me mm-hmm. like um, i literally sit in my house with npr on constantly don't retain any of it um <laughs> we could do an entire podcast where you should sit Ex- just ex- to explain you shit just to you? explain that week in politics to me <laughs> well that's <laughs> that would be amazing that would just be me repeating every line of that week's episode of last week tonight with john oliver because <laughs> that's <laughs> where i start with usually at the beginning of the week and then i just work my way down from there <laughs> um back to the movie uh oh yeah fuck <laughs> what do you think about Bradley Cooper and Rose Byrne, uh, because they when they do the time jump to the third act, they they've apparently gotten divorced. <coughs> yes. And from what little we get, I mean, it's fifteen years, so a lot could happen. But from what happened, from what we get from in the second act, they seem like a really tight couple. Like, mm-hmm. I I'm, just, I I'm wondering. Think he put his political ambitions ahead of his marriage. See, I think it's partly that but i also think here's what i think i think the grief of shooting ryan gosling yes. and leaving jason to be uh, fatherless for the whole his whole life coupled with what happened with the police precinct and him bringing everybody down i think over time that just all got to him mm-hmm. and then once 
you know, Rose Byrne said, I can't take it anymore. I think she leaves. I don't think he leaves. I think she leaves. Oh, and no. Look. I was implying that oh, she okay. left because he put his mm-hmm. work before his marriage. Well, she- I was going to say, I th- I think she leaves and then he sees, well, the only thing I, I was good at is getting rid of the bad like people, like the, the dirty cops and everything. So I'm going to put my political career into overdrive. And I think that's what. Okay. Really... I buy that. I buy that. I can, yeah. I can get down on that. <clears throat> um. One of my last notes here is a question to you. Okay. <clears throat> what are the odds <laughs> of this third act happening? Because it is almost a little too circumstantial that uh, both of their kids meet, become friends, and have the revelations that they have. I, I mean, mean, small, considering t- small town, bro. Considering they go, apparently Bradley Cooper's kid goes from Detroit to, is this Schenectady? See, I, it's, yes, i not even okay. going to try to pronounce it. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that that happens. But it, it's also interesting how Detroit apparently corrupted Bradley Cooper's kid as much as it did. Because <laughs> there, is there anything worse than watching a teenage white boy try to rap? Oh. Uh. It's cringy, right? It's oh, <laughs> yeah. that's that little montage where he's trying to freestyle. I was like, no, it's, rough. <laughs> it's, it's rough. real bad. Uh, um, what do you make of but, how their kids turned out? T- talking about um, coincidences, mm. it's very coincidental that he just <laughs> that Ryan Gosling just runs into Ben Mendelsohn, and Ben Mendelsohn's like, oh. Hi, I'll give you a job and a place to stay. <laughs> yeah, just because you can ride your dirt bike good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck, is that all it, like, can I pay rent just by fucking riding a bike around? Holy shit. Yeah. You know what's crazy is Why that... Why did I ben... work all this fucking week? <laughs> Doesn't Ben Mendelsohn say that he used to rob banks exactly the way that they do? Like, it, he puts it in Gosling's head to rob banks that way, right? It's not Gosling saying, what if I... No, I guess you, I guess it was Gosling, wasn't it? He says I drive the bike, put it in the back of your truck. Uh, I think it's a combination of both. Because I was gonna say if if Ben Mendelsohn has robbed banks like that before, who was the other? Who was the bike driver? Maybe, who was the actual maybe robber? He just tries to. Uh, maybe he befriends anyone on a motorcycle. That's what I'm saying. Maybe this has happened before, where like he somebody got caught up with him, and then they went to jail or died or something. I could believe that. I could uh, really buy into that, to be honest with you. Um, it's <laughs> I just put this together, but it's pretty crazy that this is the second movie of Ryan Gosling that we've covered where he has to play an estranged father <laughs> because he does that in what? Blue Valentine. <laughs> uh it's kind of weird. Um, I mean, because you know, with that movie, he same might not even be he might not even be Frankie's biological father. <laughs> oh man, don't make, um, don't make me talk about Blue Valentine and this movie in the yeah. same hour. Let's. I'm trying to like <laughs> tomorrow's my day off, and I'm trying not to spend the whole day crying. <laughs> well, let's talk about the ending. So oh. <laughs> I'll set it up for uh, if, for people that might be a little rusty. So as we talked about, both Ryan Gosling's son and Bradley Cooper's son meet up together in high school. They kind of become friends, but it quickly turns sour. Uh, at the end of the need movie, you, need you steal me some oxy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and then the movie. Don't do drugs, kids. Dane DeHaan finds out the truth that. Uh, thank Bradley Cooper God is the one the who. Internet. <laughs> Bradley Cooper is the one who killed his dad, and so he finds this picture, uh, and just, you know finds out all about uh, Ryan Gosling as like this this bike rider, this like uh, stunt stunt driver, I guess you would call him, kind of like a state fair thing, uh, and decides he's had enough of his family, and the. Last scene in the movie for Dane DeHaan's character is he goes to this like farm, finds this uh, meets this guy who's selling a motorcycle, gives him the cash for the bike, and just drives away. Uh, essentially, 
to just kind of find himself. I, I'm i guessing to imply that this movie is kind of a circle and like the roughest mm-hmm. of shapes, like that he's going to kind of end up being like Ryan Gosling's character. Um, Bradley Cooper having apologized to Dane DeHaan. Uh, yeah. For- can we can we talk about that scene real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna gloss over the fact that fucking Dane DeHaan like kidnaps kidnaps Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yeah, and like, do you think, but dude, he you, Bradley Cooper kills it in that scene though. He's so good. Do you think that Dane DeHaan Jason was intending to actually kill Bradley Cooper out there, or did, did, I think he was just improving? Right, he just didn't know what to do. Yeah, I think. I don't think he really had a plan. He was literally making that up as he went. It's so crazy, too, that like Bradley Cooper has kept that photo of Ryan Gosling and Dane DeHaan as a baby in his wallet for 15 years. Like, it's that been that weighed that heavily on his heart. Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely believe it did. Oh, and I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not saying I don't buy it. It's just crazy to think about that, like, to have that much level of grief and uh, regret. But, yeah, Bradley Cooper having, uh, off like ap- ap- apologized and groveled in front of Dane DeHaan, uh, apparently kind of deals uh pretty well with his grief at the end and becomes uh DA of New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, his son looks seems like he's kind of turned around on the whole wannabe gangster bullshit. Gave up on his rap career. Yep, Thank Eva Mendez. God, Eva Mendez and Mahershala Ali. Kind of get this postcard in the mail saying that Dana's gone off to wherever and that he's okay. He leaves the photo with her, doesn't he? Yeah, he uses it as a postcard. That's, okay. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I was like, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. interesting. He wouldn't want that photo. Like you would I mean, think he would want to keep that in his think possession. He would, but I think I mean. At the same I guess, time, I could see why he would want his mom to have it too. Yeah, I guess. I guess after having Bradley Cooper apologize to him, it's kind of behind him now. Um yeah. it's he got the apology, she gets the photo. Yeah. And the last shot of the movie is of course Dane DeHaan driving away to wherever on a, on a motorcycle. Ugh. Um Silver lining. We're getting you fucking jump- motorcycles, bro. <laughs> is that your silver lining? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well before I jumped into that I wanted to talk to you because I guess it's a matter of perspective. Uh oh. I don't know if I consider this a sad ending. I was just kind of thinking that <laughs> as I rewatched <laughs> this movie. I was like, I th- it is, but it, it it's an emotional ending. It's an emotionally upsetting ending, I think. Yeah, like I'll I, give it to you there. It's this movie hits me the same way that Tully did, which. I told you to watch Tolly because I recommended mm-hmm. we do it, and you were like, mm-hmm. "No, dude, doesn't fit." I get the same feeling from I, this movie though, where I'm like, "I am like, it doesn't necessarily end on a depressing, bad, fucked up note." But I am like, both of those movies, I am emotionally destroyed. Yeah, I would say this movie uh, more so than Tolly qualifies. I I hear where you're coming from. I think it's not a conventional sad ending. I think the movie as a whole definitely doesn't leave you feeling too well. Um, however, I think everything is how it should be for the most part at the end of the movie. That being said, I don't think it's necessarily a positive See, I don't want to say that everything is as it should be. Mm-hmm. Everything is as it can be. That I guess that makes that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, like the best we don't this, best case scenarios. This isn't the ending we want for the characters, but it's really the only ending we these characters can have. Yeah, it's the best case like, scenario there was, for sure. Yeah, there was no. It could have been much worse, but mm-hmm. I don't think it could have gone any better. I think what makes it qualify for me is the implication of the ending that this kind of will continue as a cycle with Dane DeHaan's character kind of filling in Ryan Gosling's shoes. Yeah. Uh, like, we don't know, is he gonna... Is him going through all this going to change him? 
Mm-hmm. Is it going to affect him in a good way, bad way? You know, he could very well come become just like his father. He I could, think he does. He could not. Like, there's no true way of knowing. I tell you what, I think it's. I think he does become like his father, but I think it's like kind of like the idea of parenting, where each generation down, you, you, you for example. My grandfather was probably a lot more strict on his kids than I am on my son. Yes. And my father was on me. You know what I mean? Like, you you still have the same kind of conventional, like, uh, personalities, I guess. Like, I, I, when I, you know, am disciplining my son, I feel parts of my parents in me. And I can feel me kind of hitting the same steps they are. I'm, you know, a lot less... Uh, emotional and angry when I do it than they were, and I think it just gets a little better with each generation. You know, I think that's kind of how it just is. Wait till you're older. <laughs> I kind of feel like that's how it is with this movie. Is that Danny DeHaan's still probably gonna end up in a similar situation as Ryan Gosling, but just but like a little less shitty, a little more. He's got a little more head on his shoulders, I think, okay. because. We're led to believe Ryan Gosling kind of has been like this for a long time. Oh, on yeah. On his own, like he's been, traveling town to town. He's been a fuck up for a minute. But Dane DeHaan's character has Eva Mendez. He has Mahershala Ali. He has good role models in his life. He has people that care about him. He's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, kind of surprisingly, it's kind of, uh, he's kind of like Kylo Ren where like he's kind of filling in the spaces of a Darth Vader like, kind of following the same footsteps but it's almost manual versus automatic he's almost forcing himself to be in that life you know what i mean what like, a fucking comparison you just I, made i know that's weird what? i know that's weird <laughs> but no I mean, one that's, could have seen that one coming wow it's i'm um, wow. yeah i think that's why it makes it a little i mean i was upset at the end of the movie i'm not gonna lie but looking at the facts versus looking at the emotions it's a little you know, it's easy to confuse the two. I will say, though, what was really confusing to me is Jason didn't take any kind of information from that guy he was buying the motorcycle from. No bill of sale, no title, no receipt. <laughs> that guy could easily just call in that that bike has been stolen. <laughs> He's a rebel without a lease. I guess, man. Um, but yeah, that's that's all, all my notes on The Place Beyond the Pines. We can jump into Silver Linings now if you'd like. And oh, I know you God. hate you hate going first. Nah, fuck uh, it. Okay. Oh, damn it. I was hoping you were going to say you would go first anyway. I can go first. It's totally fine. <laughs> um, and we kind of already talked about it, but I feel like Jason has found closure. That is kind of similar to mine. Yeah. I don't know where that's going to take him. Mine's for a different character, though. Yeah, I don't know where that's going to take him, but as I just mentioned, it's it's got to be better than what happened with Gosling. I think it's an improvement. It's a step in the right direction. It's not a leap, but it's a step. Okay. Yeah. See, I figured you were going to go for Jace, the Jason character, so mm-hmm. I think like this is I mean, it's kind of I mean, it's closure like um, almost every character gets closure to their specific storyline but especially like eva i mean eva mendez like that character she can finally like i think be at peace with the whole situation like yes her son has i don't want to say abandoned Mm -hmm. but i think she respects his decision to leave yeah um because i mean i can only imagine how you know she did honor her you know ryan gosling's dying wish of don't tell him about me yeah. But I can only imagine how, like, think about that, like, having that, not being able to share that information with your son yeah. for his entire, like, childhood going into adulthood <clears throat> and just finally yeah. having that weight lifted off your shoulders. Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't know, it's good to, it's good to see that she finally got some, I think she can finally be at peace with that whole situation. And, yeah. you know... Ali won't get a wrench to the face anymore. <laughs> See, and we could also say the same thing about uh, Bradley Cooper, that he found closure with 
confronting his his demons and all that good stuff. Um, I think, like I said, that's why I say I feel like most things are as they should be or could be at the end. The only person I kind of feel bad for is Mahershala Ali because, like, he really loved Dane DeHaan yeah. and had to deal with this shadow over his shoulder of Ryan Gosling and not being able to live up to that because, you know, he's not the biological father. But mm-hmm. I don't know, man. That's the only character I really feel bad for at the end of the movie. <laughs> um, okay. Let's get out of these negative emotions. Let's get into some fun stuff, things people can watch after they watch The Place Beyond the Pines, if they don't feel too great afterwards. What's a movie, uh, Mally, that people should watch I after? mean, my gut reaction is, of course, Crazy Stupid Love. <laughs> but I'm going to mm-hmm. recommend another film because I it like popped up uh, on my TV the other day, and I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that in years, and I kind of want to rewatch it now especially after watching this, the first Hangover movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I haven't watched that in a long it's time. It's been so long, dude. Okay. Well, I am going to go with a movie already mentioned uh, on this episode. If you didn't get enough Ryan Gosling and you want some crazy oh, like where fucking this is going. antics, some good humor, and just an all-around fun fucking time, man, check out The Nice Guys. Oh, Shane Black at his best absolutely and unfortunately a movie in theaters right now him at his worst <laughs> oh have you, um, did you, have you seen it <clears throat> oh I've, i saw it months ago uh oh, we, i'm dustin i'm, I'm, working I'm sorry i mean i am not i wasn't allowed to talk about it because it wasn't in theaters yet but i now that it's out i can talk shit about that movie because it sucks <laughs> i honestly um, i believe it <laughs> um all right well mally that is our an ultimate episode of season two of the Silver Linings playlist. We only got one more episode left oh, before God. we go on uh, go on break. It's been a hell of a season. <clears throat> it has. And we're gonna do a lot of uh, postseason wrap up next episode. Talk about a lot of things, but it's the moment we've been waiting for. We have to uh, find out. Do you? You have no idea how nervous I am right now. <laughs> we have to find out what movie we are covering next week. Normally. We offer a clue, and we already have a movie picked out. But, of course, uh, if this is your first episode listening to us, congratulations. You're about to find out what we've been talking about for a few weeks now. Uh, We put up a poll and let our fans and audience uh, pick a movie that we should cover, uh, or at least pick between two options. Uh, I selected as my pick to be 1980's The Shining. Uh, Mally, you went with last year's controversial film uh star wars the last jedi that i did and we put it up to a vote saying you guys vote let us know what movie you want us to cover and we'll we'll take the winner and we'll do a super long episode about it because we're not only going to talk about the episode itself but we're going to talk about the season as a whole what we're going to do before we go on break a bunch of stuff uh and we haven't looked at the results yet um we're about to i'm about to pull it up right now so and I think this you've, will determine. You've, you've kept up with it more than I have because I haven't even. I, I did. Ha- I have yet to look at the results at all. You've mm-hmm. kind of been. I only know what you told me. Okay. Well, I looked it up a couple days ago and I, I saw where we were at. Um, and uh, we were actually tied. We were tied about three days ago. I think you told me that, that it was literally mm-hmm. neck and neck. Um, oh. So, yeah. I'm clicking the page now. I'm Here literally is... shaking. Here is the results of the poll for our season two finale with 57% of the votes, barely necking it out there. The winner is The Last Jedi. Fuck. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. That means I have to watch that fucking movie again <laughs> so it's like avp whoever wins we lose except if we would have got my movie we would have won so it's nothing like avp <laughs> God um damn it. so we gotta watch a bad movie again Mally. oh shit um, maybe this time we'll feel differently about it <sighs> i knows? fucking doubt uh, all right, that, um, that, all right save, let's, save let's, your let's, thoughts let, we'll yep. we'll discuss this next week we'll oh 
Oh man! Yeah, you just you just barely won All there, right, man. Fifty seven percent. Um, and just so everyone knows, since we are covering the Last Jedi next week, I have a couple people with mm-hmm. varying opinions on this film. If schedules align, which I think serendipity we're all off work Mm -hmm. most of this week it's just a matter of if we're all off on the same days Mm -hmm. we may be having a few guests on next week oh it's gonna be a so things could be full episode very interesting next week it's gonna be a full episode in fact you, not even the movie itself, which I'm sure will run long, but then, like I said, we, we were going to do a season two wrap up. So it's going to be a huge finale. So it's going to be big. Brace please yourself. tune into that. You won't want to miss it. Yeah, you won't want to miss it. So congratulations, Mally. I officially secede to you. We will cover The Last Jedi next week. So you got plenty of time to rewatch it, get your thoughts oh, together. Man. Um, if you actually, because it's our finale and it's a pretty big episode, a lot of people have pretty big uh, opinions on it let us know what you think about it now and we'll talk about if you have any feedback you want to talk about the movie we'll be happy to discuss it on the show oh absolutely questions comments mm-hmm. general opinions things you want us to discuss oh my uh, please i would love that you can either hit us up individually I mean, on facebook i have a very very long list <laughs> uh you can uh, hit us up individually on facebook or on our page facebook.com slash the silver linings playlist you can either uh, message us or just post on our wall you can also do so on reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist you can either uh, dm me on there i am one of the moderators or you can just post uh, a feedback thread or a discussion thread anything you want to do while you're there, you can also check out the official discussion thread for this episode, The Place Beyond the Pines, and give that contest code we gave you earlier on in the episode for a chance to win some free stuff or discuss the film with us or other people. Uh, you can give us a suggestion for a movie you want us to discuss. So, to discuss so many things you can do on that on that subreddit. It's ridiculous. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can subscribe to us wherever you're listening to us that would be great um we're on itunes spotify stitcher google play and youtube please 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 if you haven't already take a few seconds literally takes 10 seconds maybe give us a feedback give us a rating tell us you know you like the show recommend it to your friends whatever you want to do uh after next week we're going on break for a while uh because this is 26 episodes 26 weeks out of the year it's literally half a year for us to do a season it's it's a lot holy hell uh, but it's going to be a good, good episode next week. I'm very excited. Um, uh, it's going to be very interesting. Yep. So, Mally, congratulations. I look forward to next week. Um, this was a fun episode as well. Sorry again for the delay, everyone. It's, uh, My you know, sometimes it's out of our hands. <laughs> it's out of our hands sometimes. It is what it is. I was um, very sleepy. No, it's okay. It's all I'm right. still uh, very sleepy. I'm literally going to sleep. We'll get some rest. The moment we finish this. Get ready for The Last Jedi coming to you next week. So we obviously don't have a clue. Just be prepared. Uh, Until next week where we wrap up Season 2 of the Silver Linings Playlist with our 52nd episode, The Last Jedi. As always, Excelsior. Uh, You want to do it again? Take two. No. As always, Excelsior. Motorcycle. That's a motorcycle sound I was doing her. <laughs>